Hi, I'm Beth Neville, and this is another uh, interesting, hopefully interesting to you, a technical uh, section on how to draw and paint. And we're exploring linear perspective. Uh, my husband, Robert Neville, hi, Robert, is there Hello. doing the how filming. Are you? And uh, we appreciate that very much. And Tom Pilla is helping us with the editing at Milton uh, Cable TV. So public access TV. So linear perspective has three, uh, it's a theory. It's, it's a theory that is very helpful in trying to draw things. And linear perspective is usually divided into <coughs> three uh, types or categories depending on your, the viewer's relationship to a building or a cube shape or uh, to uh, the environment. Now, We've learned a lot since astronauts have gone up in space and since Einstein has uh, uh, developed his theory of space being curved. So this Renaissance uh, theoretical development uh, is very interesting and very helpful, but there are some built-in uh, flaws into the system which are too complicated to discuss here. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit, uh, just to review, uh, about one-point perspective. In one-point perspective, uh, the classic example is, uh, we're adjusting the camera here, is that good? Okay. The, uh, is the railroad tracks disappearing in uh, the, distant, uh, the distant horizon? So all the lines, the telephone lines, the, the ties of the tracks themselves, all appear to go back to a point, one point on the horizon. And we remember that the railroad tracks do not meet. If they did, there would be a train wreck. So this photograph, I think, is a wonderful uh, example of one-point perspective, um, moving everything uh, toward the uh, distant horizon. Uh, Two-point perspective, the cube is seen uh, as from an angle, so that you see two sides of it. And the lines for the drawing this part of the, of the uh, this is a, a mill building, will disappear over here in one point, and these will disappear over on this side uh, at another point. Then three-point perspective, very rarely used because it's so odd in uh, look, uh, would be used if you were looking up like, as if you were looking up at the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., uh, here, there are all three sets of parallel lines in a, in a cube shape <clears throat> are disappearing, uh, and the most dramatic one is the vertical. So the vertical lines are getting narrower and narrower, following the rule, things farther away appear smaller than things closer to you. So if you're an amateur at drawing, that's the most important thing to remember. Things farther away seem smaller. So the floors of the building that are higher up are going to be smaller. So the lines are going to contract and get smaller and smaller till they appear to vanish uh, together or, or uh, converge, convert, not vanish, but converge uh, in a point over your head. Now, the lesson today that I just thought would be fun because it's such a challenge uh, is, thank you for adjusting the camera, uh, such a challenge is to do a covered bridge. I don't think there's anything more complicated than a covered bridge. And if you can draw a covered bridge, you can probably draw anything uh, in terms of a building or a structure, if you can understand how it's done. I have a wonderful collection of, of photographs of, uh, from calendars of covered bridges. This covered bridge, we're looking down on the bridge. Uh, then, and some of the other covered bridges, photographs, for example, this one, uh, the person who took the photograph is slightly below the roadway. So he, he's got a, uh, or she has a very different perspective on the covered bridge. This one, uh, again, the person taking the photograph, their camera is probably looking straight at this uh, bottom of the bridge. I would, uh, it seems to be 
about uh, where uh, it would be. So each one of these uh, represents a different uh, perspective. This one, the camera, is looking down because we can see the roadway. So whoever took this photograph, their camera was slightly above the roadway. Now, why am I talking about the camera and the viewer? Because where the viewer or the camera is positioned makes such a difference in how the lines are drawn, whether they're going up or they're going down or, or whatever. Uh, the one constant in two-point perspective is that the, the vertical lines of the, of the drawbridge are drawn as straight up and down. We're not going to... We're not going to do the skyscraper thing and pretending they're converging. They're going to remain straight up and down. So uh, you can see here, this stays straight. straight. And, and by straight, I mean at right angles to your horizon line. Here's another. This one is so interesting. It's so clear. These three major lines are at right angles to the horizon line. The only things that that converge are this side going back this way, very dramatic, and the roof line. So one, two, three lines are going to seem to converge over here. And this one's almost straight on, but there will be a slight convergence coming together of the lines of the face, the opening of the drawbridge over on this side. So in order to try to make this uh, uh, work for you in understanding what's going on, I have cut out uh, a draw a, a covered bridge uh, from a calendar so that you can see the lines of the covered bridge more clearly without all the vegetation and all the rest of the stuff around it. So that was my first step. And then I said, let's see if we can get a piece of paper long enough to show where the uh, lines and the vanishing point would be. So this is going to be my demonstration. Do, do we need to get it even? Yes, We're good? Okay, great. Thank you, Robert. We're going to put the cut-out drawbridge. Um, sorry, I keep calling it a drawbridge. Covered bridge. Let's get the, this down correctly. Covered bridge. We're going to place it about over here on the paper. Um, okay, I think that's... I want to try to get it where I had it before. All right, All right. I'd work this out before we started filming. All right, I think it was about there. Okay, I hope that's going to be right. Okay, now, uh, if we put a long ruler on the most dramatic lines that are tipping down, we're going to start with a roof, all right? So if we start with the roof line, here's the roof line right here. This is the roof line. All right? And we say, where is that going back? And we're going to use a dotted line. Okay, it goes back like that. Next, we're going to put the ruler on the bottom of the roof line. And we're going to continue our dotted lines back here. All right, now the shadow, this dark line here represents a shadow. This is not part, an actual part of the structure, it's just a shadow. Now we're getting into the red uh, facing of the uh, boards, and that's going back about like that. Now this part here goes back. Now, the bottom lines converge. All right, so let's take this off, and we're going to find um, that our vanishing point is somewhere uh, around here. 
so that all our lines, let me see if I can do it a different way. Let me try something different here. We're going to put this down, all right, and we're going to do this one. Let's do it let's do like this, all right. Okay, and that's going to come in about like that. All right, now let's go to the other side. What we're trying to do is determine where the vanishing points are, where these lines, parallel lines, appear to converge uh, on the horizon or on our paper. Now we're going to do the short side, and we're going to start with the roof line here and continue that back. This is, goes way back much further. All right, then we're going to take the bottom part of this, and that just goes way back over to about there. And then we're going to take the two lines, that these two that go together back there. Now we're coming down to the uh, roadway, and that goes about there. So this uh, vanishing point, it's probably the other way, but anyway, whatever, is over here. And the structure is it. Now, what's going to get confusing about this, and this is why they're so hard to draw, are these two lines that are structurally slanted. If you look at the boards here, they go straight up and down, all right? These represent uh, the, uh, uh, the, the structural windows or spaces because they had to get light in these bridges. They were not lit inside. So the reason they are open on the edges, uh, probably also for ventilation, but the main reason was you had to get some light in there. Otherwise, it would be uh, like going into a tunnel. Now I want to show you one other thing as we continue to do this and move. I'm, I'm, every time I see a line there, I'm drawing a, a little uh, mark here, and then it gets into a shadow. Uh, you will see that the lines over here are wider apart, and they get narrower each each time you have a window. Uh, it gets narrower, and then of course there are these lines uh, in that that do this all the way going back. Um, so that that represents how sh how it gets closer together. These things get closer together as you go back. All right, this is, looks pretty confusing. So I'm going to show you what I did. I put a piece of tracing paper right over this. All right, and I did this ahead of time, so try to make this make a little bit more sense. So here's the tracing paper over the top of the drawbridge. And we will see that if we take these lines here, they go right back to the vanishing point like a fan. There's one point, here's another, here's another, there's another, there it straightens out. These on this side, over here, they go back like a fan, coming around just like a fan, opening up this way. And these lines remain a, a vertical. So let's get this orange paper out of the way, which I think is maybe a little harder to see through. Now, here is the diagram, and here is the, um, the tracing paper, the, the actual photo and the tracing paper. Uh, part of the complexity of drawing of one of these bridges um, is that we see to the interior. So when you look into the interior, uh, you see it as black, the pattern repeats. This line is the same as that line. Here's what's similar. This line and that line go together. This little line and that line match. This one matches this. This one matches that. So the inside, the, in the dark, uh, the pattern there, where we see the trees on the outside, is similar to the pattern we see on the outside. So if you grasp that concept, uh, it, it becomes a little less confusing. All right, let's take another example here. And um, we're going to put, this one I think is very clear. 
All right, and I'm going to put it down. Yeah, all right, got it? Okay, and now we're gonna go back down again. Okay, we're going to put this under some tracing paper. I know it's gonna be a little difficult for the viewers to see what's going on because the tracing paper is not absolutely um, clear, but I think it'll become clear as we go along. Okay, we're going to take the roof line. I'm going to try to do this upside down. Now, it's interesting, this roof has a bend in it. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> and this has a bend. So, our lines going back in the distance have a bend. Uh, there's a bow in the middle of the roof. A very, very interesting. Now, the next line, important line, is this one, and that's a straight wooden line. The next set of lines are the windows. Here come the windows, the top of the windows. Now the bottoms of the windows. Now the very, very bottom of the bridge and the bottom of the supports. So if we put our ruler on this, we're going to see that the vanishing point is pretty close to us. All right, that takes us back to about here, this takes us back to about there, and our curved roof, we're gonna pretend it's straight. So our vanishing point is over here. So the horizon is about there. Okay, now the other side is more complex because we don't have much to go on. We don't have much to go on at all. Here's the base, all right, of the of the thing, of the covered bridge. Here's another guideline. This point and this point are similar. So they're going to go back. And that's going to go way, way over here. And then uh, here's another clue, uh, the sign on the top. Now, what is this telling us? Why, why is this so... Here's, this is short, from here to here short. These lines going way off. The reason for that is that the person taking the photograph was probably standing right about there, right in the middle. So, of course, if this is like, <clears throat> this would be like one point perspective. He's looking almost right straight into it. It's not really true. If you were looking into it, you'd be able to see out the other side which we don't, we look, we're looking at this side. But he's much closer uh, to one point perspective than not. Now these lines are all going to remain verticals. This one, this one, this one over here, this one, straight up, straight up. Now this bridge has a wonderful curve top over here and a nice flare. So that really uh, adds to the drama uh, and a, a, a lot of these did have a curve. And the reason for that is if you're going to be on, in your buggy, all right, with your hay wagon drawn behind you, uh, they wanted to be economical. They didn't want these bridges to be huge. If they were huge, they would be likely to fall uh, down with snow or get blown over. So they wanted to make them as small as possible. But you still wanted to be able to get that buggy through there. And most of them were single file. So that's why if you made the top, the peak higher, you could still get your buggy through, you know, because the, the, the people would be in the hay mow and all the rest of the stuff would be, the hay wagon or whatever was going through would be kind of um, more this shape. And therefore the bridge could have uh, lower sides and still be uh, sustainable in terms of the, uh, the its structure and not fall over. Okay, now it's very hard to me to see through the tracing paper, but it is possible to see some of the interior structure on the other side. And here's a sign, I see that. Uh, so this bridge is going back this way. And these lines, of course, remain uh, vertical here. Now I'm going to take this paper out, uh, the photograph, and let's see if we can find out some more about it. Yeah, this is open. You see this section here, that section? That, this flange comes out to here and out to here. And inside, uh, in the dark here, we can see some of the supports going this way and this way. 
Uh, we can also see, uh, oh, there's a kind of like a, a, a red interior part here, and there's some more openings here, and the lines of the floor, the wooden floor, are seen going back like this, that way. This, this is up and down, this way. And then there's a modern, <laughs> this is interesting, there's a modern guardrail there to protect it from getting smashed. There's another guardrail over there. Okay, so that's basically that one. That, this is a pretty clear cut uh, uh, covered bridge in very nice condition. Uh, the original, this is obviously corrugated tin and the original would not have corrugated tin. Of course, it would have been a wood roof. So uh, let's take another one on here and just maybe analyze it without drawing the whole thing. This one we are, yes. In this one, the photographer is clearly down and you're looking up at the bridge. You can almost see the underside here and you can see the roof, the inside roof. Is that showing up on this? Okay, great. So if you can see the roof, that means the photographer is pointing his camera or her camera up, up, this way. Uh, and that's why we can see the structure here uh, of the uh, underside of the eaves is very clear because he's pointing or she is pointing up. And this is another wonderful demonstration of trying to be economical uh, with the bridge uh, so that people can get in there and wagons can in, get in there and yet you don't have to make the bridge any bigger than it is. They all seem to follow the same format. Keep it as small as possible, as short as possible. Make sure that light gets inside, that it's not going to blow over and, and, uh, you know, and that the roadbed is not going to get icy. That was the whole point of having it covered. You know, in, in New England winters, in Pennsylvania and New York State winters, you know, the snow, I remember snow drifts 15, 20 feet high uh, in upstate New York, uh, and it was very difficult to keep the roads clear of snow. The drifts were enormous, absolutely enormous. Uh, they don't get snows like that anymore, but at, when I was growing up, that was very common. Um, let's take one more. And this one, the viewer is, the photographer is probably uh, just about parallel, where the camera is parallel to this line, because that this line is very flat. See this line? This line is at right angles to the edge of the photo photograph. And that means that that is the horizon line, and therefore the camera was focused right about there. So the, the camera person was standing down. And again, we can tell, because you can see the ceiling. We can see, it's probably not showing up in the camera, but I can see here the structure of the ceiling. You're looking up at that. You're looking up at the eaves. And we see very, another clue? We don't see the roof. Look at this one. Here, there's another clue about where the camera person was. We do not see the roof. No roof. Okay, if the no roof, that means that the camera was down looking up. Uh, contrast that with this one. Yeah, that's the best way to describe this. We see the roof. All right, you see the roof. Then the camera has to be in a different location. Um, I think that is, let's see if there are any others in here. I think those are the best ones. Oh yeah, here's another one. Let's take this one. Okay, on this one, I'm trying to figure this out. Yes, okay. This one's very interesting because we can see the roof, but we can also see a little bit of the floor. So here the person was probably standing, uh, had the camera about, oh, five feet above the floor, but still far enough back uh, that you could see part of the roof. And the, the nice thing about this uh, photograph is it makes it so clear that the uh, uh, Diagonal lines here, the wonderful V-shaped lines, are a result of the internal structure, the support, that not only provided window space, but helped to hold the thing up. I mean, you have to realize, if you build a tunnel out of wood, it's going to fall over. It's going to go, you know, you take a box, 
Take a wine box, all right? We drink a lot of wine. <laughs> Take a wine box, if a uh, cardboard, if inside there are like a, 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 a series of small cardboard containers or sometimes they're made out of press board, there, there, there are two purposes there. One is to hold the bottle so they don't clank together and break, but the other is to give the, the, the uh, carton some structure so it isn't just going to flop over. If you, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think how else to describe it. Or well, even an egg carton. It's to hold the eggs, but it's also to give some stability to uh, the carton. So here we go. These diagonal lines serve two purposes. They create the window, uh, the light structure, but they also help to hold the thing so it's not going to fall. This will collapse back or forth in either direction. So uh, those serve two purposes. All right, I wanted to show you one more uh, building on a two-point perspective. I think we've probably taken care of the barn. Uh, let's pull out a little bit more paper here. Uh, when we're looking at this particular barn, it has a, a different roof shape. Uh, this is, type of barn was pretty standard uh, in Columbia County in upstate New York. We had a lot of barns of this type. Is it showing up pretty well? Okay, good. Uh, and this one has a curved roof uh, that protects the mow, the hay mow, which is up here. There's the opening, so the hay would go on the top and the horses or cattle or whatever would be down on the bottom. Uh, and so if we're going to draw this one, uh, it, I th I'm going to try drawing it upside down. Okay, I think I can do that with this one. All right, here's the horizon line. And then the sides of the, of the barn uh, come up straight. Here's one side over here. There's another side over here. And further back, because of perspective, I'm going to put it back about, mm, about there. There's a silo in the way, uh, kind of a modern silo, but we're not going to worry about that. So th th the line, this line right there, is going to slightly converge off to a, a horizon line over here. This roof line is very steeply pitched. Is this showing up pretty much? Pretty good? Okay, good. This pit is pitched really very uh, sharply down. And if you want to know how it is, you put your ruler on it, all right, and bring it right back up. And you can do that outside too, all right? This part, let's take that one, also converges. This is the top of that roof. And it's uh, going back over here, but we're not gonna draw that yet. The next thing you're going to find, you've drawn your, the front facade and you've drawn the side. Now, the, well, how do you figure this part out? You start with the door, you start with the middle, all right? Here's the middle. And you come up and you, you calculate about where that peak is. This, it's almost uh, two thirds, one third, two thirds. So here's one third, two thirds. It's going to be up about here and it's gonna be right in the middle, 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 middle. So you find that middle point. Then, now it's possible to draw that curve. I think I've made it too high. All right, I do believe I made it too high. Here's the curve. Yes, I made it too high. And then it comes down here, and it curves this way. Right. Sorry about the abrupt end, but our camera, our Sony camera, has a mind of its own. So here is the, the drawing, uh, tracing that we did of the drawbridge. Um, why do we keep saying drawbridge? Covered bridge. And next week we're going to do oil painting and the week after that we're going to do acrylic. Beth Neville for Art and Life, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.